previously on Wall Street Warriors. This game is a multi-million dollar buy-in. Holy How much is it? About 50 so get far. Get 50 more. I'm going to Go get it done now. It's a turning point in my life. Four years are over and it's the beginning of real life. You consider yourself to be resilient. You are going to get knocked down a little bit. I'm 28 years old. I think I'm one of the youngest fund managers on Wall Street. We have so many guys in saying this. If we're wrong, we wouldn't be back to square zero, but we'd be darn close. My future basically rests in the hands of Sanders. I love an opportunity. My name is Jessica and I work on the New York Board of Trade. I am a cotton options broker. We open at 10.30 so we have about five minutes before the open. And it's usually when you start to get your bearings as to where the market's going to open. There's a crop report on Monday so I think it could be volatile today in here. broker on a commodities market basically takes orders from clients, asks for a market, calls. buys or sells what they need to do. Still sold on it. Great. You were 20, right? Yeah, 20. And then make sure that the trade hits up in the customer's account. Sold deck by buying deck 56 puts two. There's so many questions swirling around what kind of crop are we going to have and what kind of weather conditions are going to be presented and how much cotton is actually going to be yielded. This market acts as a tool to hedge against potential loss. That's really what it's about. Welcome to Aegis Capital Group's second annual venture capital pitch day. Small businesses really drive job growth in the local economies. Today I've set up a venture capital pitch day at Columbia University where we have 15 companies presenting their business ideas. Each company is looking to raise between five and ten million dollars and we'll have approximately 50 people in attendance that are looking to invest into these companies. What's your ideal check writing size? Ideal is three to five million. Yeah. I invest in about 15 businesses every year. So more than every month, I'm investing in a company. Um, at that type of pace, you need to be filling the hopper with good investment opportunities pretty fast. Not to let anything out of the bag, but this is a very like, interesting company. There's a lot of people who are good financial analysts, There's a lot of people who do deals, but Brett has this ability to just knock things out. Like you, you give him a task, let's say it can be a gigantic task, and he really finds the right place on, the, on this curve of input in terms of energy versus output. You know, really maximize your returns. Looking to raise capital, looking at negotiating different contracts. Looking at I grew up in a small city called Dawson Creek. It's in northern British Columbia, 10,000 people. I left Dawson Creek after working on the oil drilling rigs for a year to save up for college. I had enough of that after a few friends of mine died actually on the job. That was enough of, a, enough of a fear factor for me to decide that that's not the lifestyle that I was looking for. So I went to McGill University, finished the top of my class. 
Got recruited to work for Solomon Smith Barney in their investment banking practice. I'd moved down to New York. And I was like, this is the place to be. This is what I want to do for the rest of my life. It was very gung-ho. Uh, about a year after not sleeping very much and getting beaten up, I'm like, wow, this is, this is a bit of a different world than I sort of anticipated. And I said, is this a lifestyle I aspire to have? And the answer really was no. So I came up with an investment thesis that I thought made a lot of sense, raised some money and got a team together to form my own private equity company. I see a lot of people living their lives that are not very exciting, not very fulfilling. And I said, why not try to create a life that you dream of? When I get back from Egypt, what we'll do is we'll have a little marketing campaign specifically targeted towards hotels. So I'm actually flying off to Cairo in about uh, three hours from now. I'm very anxious to get everything done today in time. It's a very high intense day. You really need to stay focused on the critical items that need to get taken care of. I'll Johnny bring it over. Basically, it's doomsday. Yeah, for the whole market. It's nasty. This is probably our make or break year due to the fact that we have so many guys in SanDisk. You gotta see this actually. I'm gonna find a gift to you. This will be the largest position I've ever built in one stock. It's critical that this company works out because it's my first large, large position. So it is a make or break year for us. Market's pulling back. Dow's down about 100 and NASDAQ's down about 25. Uh, our position in saying this is pretty much flat today. It's up about uh, 20 cents, actually. If the stock was already performing well, I wouldn't have many worries. But, you know, since we're at a kind of a stagnant position right now, things are going to get a little tough. I'm basically basing my future on this company. So when things don't happen right, or I'm not opening accounts, or I'm not up to my game, or I'm not raising assets, um, it sticks with me. Yes, hi. Is Mr. McRae level? We got a couple of trainees that we work closely with. It's a very difficult process getting through this trainee program. Yes, can I get David on the line, please? It's Richard Walensky calling. A lot of what the new guys do here is they have to build up their amount of contacts that they've made. It's definitely not a, a very sexy position, but it's paying your dues on Wall Street. Dave, the reason for the call, I represent an investment banking firm down here on Wall Street in New York. Now, it's not a sales call, Dave, nothing to recommend. Simply forwarding out my details, a track record of my business card. Now, if it's something you like, great. I love an opportunity down the line to work with you, make you good money in the markets. If not, well, part as friends, you'll never hear from me. Fair enough? Well, Dave, I haven't offered you anything today. All I'd like to do is put my literature on your desk, get back to you one time. Fair enough for now? Rich Walensky, kid's a pit bull. The guy's a, a scrapper. Little guy, but he's feisty as hell. <laughs> I mean, I never personally spoke to him myself. He should be well familiar with the company. It's a personal banking issue. I can't just start saying numbers and his private personal information. Just let him know I'm on the line, please. He hung up. Right. Comes with the territory. That's going to help him in this business. You can't take no for an answer and hang up the phone and go about your day. Oh, good afternoon, it's Braden. Ben White's kind of the superstar, and we're really excited about his progress. Barclays Bank, the biggest bank out of London, they own 9 million shares of SanDisk. All right, Fidelity Mutual Funds here in the States, they own 25 million shares. Make anywhere from five to 600 phone calls in a day, in a 13-hour day. Bye-bye. Hey, Steven. I'd say out of that, you're getting, on average, one out of every 20 calls you make, you get the guy on the phone. Well, Richard, please listen, stop jumping to conclusions. All I'm simply doing is forwarding out my details. Yeah, hi. Thanks. Ninety-five percent of people who start as creators, they'll lose money at first. That's why we ask you about perseverance and are you mentally tough and can you survive that type of pressure? The last week I interviewed with the SMB Capital, a day trading company I'm interested in working for. Right now coming out of school, I feel that Wall Street is the place where I need to be. I need to be thrown into this environment. You know, it might not be a friendly environment, but I think it's necessary for me to build the confidence to be successful. Do you consider yourself to be a competitive person? Um, yes. Can you give me an example of your competitiveness? They told me to email me a couple days after the interview to let me know if I had the job or not. And I'm getting a little nervous. I still haven't heard back from them. I don't know if that's a good or bad thing, but we'll see.
the hardest thing about being a trader is, are you tough enough? You know, can you make it through the learning curve? You know, Ray, do you think that she's mentally tough enough to do this? I think, I think that's honestly the hardest thing to gauge when you interview somebody. Nobody is ever going to be guaranteed to be good at this. Yeah, she lives at home, right? I mean, it's really important she not have the pressure to earn money those first few months. Trading is something that takes quite a bit of time to pick up. Generally, people are not consistently profitable during their first six months, so it requires someone who is able to financially survive that learning curve. When you get good at this job, you can make you know 100 plus thousand dollars a year eight months out of college. You know, at other places you're an assistant trader and you're getting coffee. Here, you generate your own trading ideas, and when you get good, you cannot imagine doing anything else. Anything else that a red flag that came up? I don't want to say she sounds like she's had a priv privileged life growing up, but it sounds like she hasn't really dealt with any major setbacks. I mean, what obstacles do we really have to, to fight through? Let me tell you something. To become, to become captain of the mathletes was no small task. All right? <laughs> Coming up next on Wall Street Warriors. I get to know these companies. I go out to the meetings. I go to San Francisco. A guy doesn't want to pass a guy looking after his money. You want me to send you an email and try to follow back up with you? Chase you around like it's a, like a witch hunt for 100 shares of stock. When I get back, why don't we we'll go through these? And after this, I'm going to be flying off to Cairo. There's absolutely no way we'll be able to drive to JFK in time. I'm going to see if I can get a helicopter. Okay, I get in bed with the management. I get to know these companies. I go out to the meetings. I go to San Francisco. Ben White sounds great on the phone. His pitch is phenomenal. He's about to be done with the program, which means opening his 15 accounts, he's, he's out from under us and he can do whatever he wants. The kid will be a monster in the business. You know, but please don't misconstrue my enthusiasm for this company as any type of sales pressure. I mean, if I was a good salesman, I'd had you off the phone an hour ago. I learned everything from Lance. Basically, everything I've known, I've learned from him. Do you have any idea how much YouTube did last year in revenues? Zero dollars. They didn't make any money. So, let me ask you a question. Tony, why would Google run out and pay that much money for a company that's not making any money at all? Well, they did it because they're an advertising company. YouTube is getting 100 million hits a day. 100 million hits a day? I mean, why? Because we're voyeurs. We like watching other people. I tend to take it on a little more aggressive. It wasn't natural for me. I'm a little more timid guy, believe it or not. You'd probably never know if you heard me on the phone. All right, songs are out these days. The kids want video clips. Ow. Video clips. And again, SanDisk. They're the number one producer of flash memory cards. No one wants to do some business with a passive person. Told you, what do you want me to do then? You want me to send you an email and try to follow back up with you? Chase you around like it's a, like a witch hunt for 100 shares of stock? You know, passive people are fine. They're, they're gonna be great to watch this CEO's car, or, you know, do the laundry for him, but a guy doesn't want a passive guy looking after his money. All right, be good now. Bye-bye. Pardon? I'm still waiting to hear from SMB Capital to see if I was accepted into their training program. I'm supposed to get my answer today, so I don't know. I'm getting a little antsy about this whole thing. I think a day trader's life seems pretty intense while the market is open from 9 to 4. I, I just even wonder when do they have time to, to go to the bathroom or go eat because I feel like within two, three minutes a lot could happen. So you have to be 100% focused all the time. Oh, I got an email. At this time, Mike and I would like to invite you to join our desk. I got the job. This is it. I just finally got my answer and I'm in. They invited me to join their desk. SMB is a very competitive place to work at. They do not accept a lot of new candidates. I, I feel honored that they accepted me, you know. Je félicite encore une fois, quoi. Donc, uh, ça m'étonne pas de toi. Mm -hmm. Ça m'étonne pas. Yeah. Oh, but you le <laughs> chalet new, you could do it. But now, my concern is how am I going to live financially? How am I going to be able to survive? We're going to try to stay with my parents as long as possible to save as much <laughs> mooching off my parents. <laughs> I'm actually going to be moving with my friend Megan. I met her my first week at NYU at Stern. It was orientation week. We've been really good friends. She's one of my best friends here. But this job, they're not going to pay you for five weeks? No, they're not going to pay me ever. I mean, unless I make money unless on my own trade, money. which usually doesn't happen for the first six months. So how are you going to pay rent? <laughs> I don't know, I spoke to my parents. I mean, they told me they'd help me out with rent. The rest is gonna be up to me to figure out, but they will help me out with the rent part. 
for the average day trader, I mean, it takes about six months until you could be consistently profitable. So my question now is what's going to happen <laughs> within the next six months? How am I going to be able to, to buy food, to go out, you know, to still maintain a decent lifestyle? <laughs> Um, he took his business public, it's a few hundred million dollar market cap company. After this I'm going to be flying uh, off to Cairo to have a little bit of a recruiting powwow, if you will. And that's for 2.30, right? I just wanted to confirm that the car's on time. Thank you very much. Of an hour to get to my apartment, get my suit off, change into other clothes, take a car down to JFK, and then hopefully make my flight. So when I get back, why don't we we'll go through these. Great to see you. And when I'm back, let's sit down for lunch. And you guys should as well chat. As I'm expanding my business, I'm looking to hire somebody from a major investment bank in London. Right. Reconfirm for me that we will in fact be there. I'm okay. going to meet him in Egypt in order to get to know him better on both a personal and a professional level. Typical Manhattan, the traffic's horrible. I'm running pretty pressed for time. There's only one direct flight to Cairo every day. So I think given the traffic, I'm going to see if I can get a helicopter to take a ride out to JFK. Hi, this is Brett Hickey calling. I want to see if you have any uh, flights leaving to uh, JFK um, in about 45 minutes from now? Yes, for one passenger. Perfect, thank you. We'll be there uh, in about 45 minutes then. Thank you. So, we're in luck. We got a helicopter. The big issue is now if we miss the helicopter, there's absolutely no way we'll be able to drive to JFK in time. First thing that happened this morning was there was a huge amount of buying and the market did go up, but selling then came in and started beating it down. It's back, coming off pretty badly. Hey, at 20. At 20. Go to 30. They just sold 200. They give you a bid and an ask. They'll take either side of the market. They don't care which, as long as it fits their needs and there's a profit built in. Fire! Fire! July 2 points. July 52 put. I'll buy 100. What is that? July 2 put. It's become such a worldwide marketplace now, and of course, it's gone online, so it's traded electronically now, and I think that that has brought a new element. The average Joe, who never even would have thought of trading cotton, of all things, you know, is now throwing his money into the cotton market as well. March calls in a quarter. March calls a 50 and a quarter. People want a little piece of uh, the small and shrinking pie. It's cutthroat down here. See call spread set. There's a speed factor that's involved, so broker will come in, say 450 bid. First person to say sold and get recognized is supposed to get the trade. Sold, March calls. So you have to be loud and you have to be quick. At 30! At 30! I think everybody that works down there and excels down there has something in their personality that can deal with high pressure and feeds off of the insanity. Coming up next on Wall Street Warriors. Helicopter leaves in 30 minutes. Anybody placing bets? When it's busy, there's no difference that I'm a woman. Congratulations. My parents are worried about how I'm going to be able to make a living. I was thinking maybe if... She wants to come back to France Maybe you can, you can, you can look for a job in France, no? day is always seeming like you're a little bit late for everything or just barely making everything. I always say one of these days I'm not going to make it. Hopefully today's not that day. It's very typical to be running around um, seeming almost on the verge of being out of control. Shoelaces don't work. We're out of time. Passport, wallet, the rest can be bought. You know, usually you'd be excited going to Egypt for a week, climbing the pyramids, gonna be fantastic, right? But 
life is so hectic that it's not even going to hit me. I don't even know what I'm going to do in Egypt, but if, you know, I should be excited. That's the one thing that's weird in my life. Things are moving so quickly, I don't feel like I have time to look forward to things. So we're at 3.30 exactly. We're supposed to be at the heliport now. Helicopter leaves in 30 minutes. Anybody play some bets? When it's busy, there's no difference that I'm a woman. In fact, sometimes my voice is a little bit more high and a little bit more loud than some of the guys. At 30! Back 7 calls at 30! Back 53, 63 pence! Back 33 pence! I definitely hold my own. There's no doubt about it. I take it, but I'll dish it out right back. At 3! Drake 23! There are a handful of women that work down there that have been doing a great job and working hard down there for years. You almost have to have a time boy type quality. You gotta take your skirt off when you're humming the door. <laughs> so you can never let them see you cry. There's no crying so in cotton. I've always felt very comfortable here. Joe wants me to show cleavage over here. <laughs> Oh, you show them yours first, I'll show them mine after. The relationships that I have with the guys here is more of a, a brother-sister type relationship. It's such a physical business. You, you do scream, you do yell, you kind of spit on each other. You're in a crowded ring, you get pushed and shoved, and nobody has time for matters, so you have to be a little tough. It's challenging. It's physical. And I probably wouldn't do very well sitting at a desk all day. So I checked my emails and I, I had my response from SMB. They did offer me the position. Hello. Congratulations. So I, I went and told my parents. They were excited. I mean, they were proud. Leticia, how long will it take before you start to win a little bit of money? Then they started asking questions. He said that in the for everyone who debuted, it was not before 4 or 5 months. 6 months? It's a good entry, all that, right? Yes. 6 months? How are you going to do it for 6 months to support you? Well, if anything, I'll get a job on the weekends. Like, you will have to, huh? Yeah. You know you are. You spend money like uh, you don't even know. And uh, you, you, you'll have to be more well, careful you'll now. You'll have to huh? cut the expenses. Yeah. You know. We're going to help you for the, the rent, you know that, huh? Mm-hmm. And you have to, to cut, uh, you know, you don't go to Starbucks as often and uh, you have I to mean, be careful. Yeah, I mean, you have to work during the weekend else. and not be partying as much and uh, yeah, you have to take that seriously. Huh? I know. Your mother's right. Mm -hmm. well, I think my parents' concerns are, are justified. They're moving back to Paris. I understand that they're worried about how I'm going to be able to make a living. I'm going to continue to learn lessons, continue to work at the restaurant. Même essayer de trouver un autre boulot, genre, enfin, de, je vais même pas dire le mot, mais... Les week-ends, peut-être. Oui, là, travailler les week-ends de bartender, enfin, qui, où tu fais de l'argent. Bartender. Non, 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 non. They make, like, 400 dollars a night. Tu n'as pas payé pour les gens de... After the five weeks training, I was thinking, maybe if... She wants to come back to France again. Maybe you can, you can look for a job in France, no? In a bank or something, no? Now that I got the job, I'm going to have to study a lot to read up on the latest news. I don't want to walk into there not knowing what's going on. It's Wall Street. I, I have to be prepared when I walk in there on Monday morning. Papa and Mama are not going to be here. So, you'll be on your own. I know you don't like to hear it, but, you know, that's, uh, that's the way it is, you know. I know. I got it. I think I got the message. Okay, I'm just going to get it. Mama! Oh, I'm just in the bathroom. Sorry. 
effort for like invading it. Okay, as a kid, I've always wanted to work on Wall Street, to work in finance. I I love the fact that people get to. Um, to I think they're they're the, it's the future. They get to shape the world. The, 